Hey guys, welcome back to Plans Vocals. Today, today, we have quite the video for you guys. Strap in, strap on. It's going to be a wild ride. Today is another book review. And this time, this time we are reviewing No More Secrets, The Candy Cavern by Chaya Rajic. And it's illustrated by James Scroll. I'm so sorry. I'm probably pronouncing that one. I'm very bad with names. I apologize uh, to the author and illustrator. But um, yeah, this is the, this is the book we're reviewing today. Uh, many of you will probably already know that it's published by Brave Books, um, a Christian publisher. And before we get, start this video, I want to make a few disclaimers. One, I do not know who Lives of TikTok is. I've heard th things about her that she might be anti-LGBTQ. I do not know who she is. I have not seen anything about her. I have no knowledge of her. The only knowledge I have of her is inside this book. That's all. And disclaimer number two is I have seen some books within Wave Books category that are problematic. Like there's one called Paws Off My Cannon that encourages gun control. And there's an anti-Canada book called The Island of Free Ice Cream, which we don't support that. We don't like that. So not all of the books published in Rave Books company or category, catalog, are good, morally. Some of them are problematic. We don't like those here. But this video is going to be about why this one is perfectly fine. And while the author potentially is problematic, the book contents doesn't have to be. That makes sense to everyone? Okay. So what inspired me to do this video in the first place is I saw this video. I'm not going to name the YouTuber because I don't want you guys to go and hate on her. Um, but I saw this YouTuber review this book and I was like, wow, that sounds like a book I would like. So I'm going to check it out. But the review was very... It was very interesting, let's just say that. It was very much like... How do I say this? It was very much like she didn't understand what occurred in the book. She clearly had read it because she read the book in the video, but she like didn't seem to comprehend what happened in the book because like she kind of came up with all of these conspiracy theories about like what happens inside of it and none of it was true. <laughs> So, I thought that was really weird, and um, I decided to make a video, I decided to buy the book and make a video talking about what actually happened in it, because it wasn't even close to what her review said it was about. Um, she, the basic gist of what she was saying is that this book was transphobic, and I'm like, where, where? So, I wanted to make a video talking about this book. And I'm a member of the LGBTQ community. You guys know I'm bisexual and asexual. Like, if this book was anti-LGBTQ, I would be hating it. I would be making a video coming for this book's neck if it was homophobic but, or transphobic. But it's not. It's just not. And this is a video explaining why. So, trigger warning for child grooming and pedophilia before we get started because that's what the book actually is about. It's told in a child-friendly way, obviously, because it's a book for children, but I just wanted to give you that context. So yes, now let's start the review. We have No More Secrets, The Candy Cavern. Here is the front cover. I really like the art in this book. It's absolutely adorable. Here is Rose the Lamb on the main character on the cover here, and then we have the back of the book, which I will read to you now. No more secrets, the candy cavern. Rose the Lamb was excited to begin second grade, but when her new teacher focused more on candy than teaching, Rose knew that something was wrong. Rose must decide whether to keep secrets from her parents or listen to her teacher. Join Rose in the sugary story as she learns to listen and trust her parents when she gets into a sticky situation. So that is what the back of the book says, and yeah, I guess we're ready to open it now and review it properly. So I can debunk one of this reviewer's criticisms of the book right away without even opening it. She says in her review that the 
quality itself of like the, the physical book is like really cheap and that like the paper it's itself is really like cheap and the, the, the illustrations aren't very clear and stuff like that um, but I'm holding it in my hands right now and that's just not true at all it's a very high quality book like the feel of it is good the um, the pages are thick the, uh, the binding is nice, the illustrations are very crisp and clear, like, this is a good quality product. Like, I'm not sure what she meant by that. So, here we have the first page, and on the first page it says, Once upon a time there lived a little lamb named Rose. Rose was so excited to start her very first day of second grade. She couldn't wait to see her friends and meet her new teacher. And here is what it looks like. Again, the art is just absolutely precious. Rose the Lamb is adorable. And so that's what the first page looks like. I really like her sunflower shirt. When Rose's parents dropped her off at school, they gave her a huge hug and reminded her to listen to her teacher. With a skip in her step, Rose ran into her class and ready to learn. Okay, I want to point out something. This whole video is going to be kind of like a huge reaction to this per other person's review. Without putting the, her video in the in this video because I want I don't want you guys to know who she is and number two um, I don't want to get copyright struck so um, yeah um, I want to give special notice to the line where it says her parents gave her a huge hug and reminded her to listen to her teacher okay so right there, they want her to listen to her teacher, and a big part of what this other person's review was saying was they didn't understand, like, the moral of this story. They were like, oh, this story is trying to tell kids that they shouldn't listen to their teacher. How awful. And I'm like, that's not the moral of the story, because literally right here it says, when Rose's parents dropped her off at school, they gave her a huge hug and reminded her to listen to her teacher. So, right there, that disproves her argument. So, again, did you actually, to the reviewer, did you actually pay attention to what happened in this book? Let's go to the next page. Welcome, class, Mr. Woolley said. This year we'll learn all of our sheepy things like counting and reading, but we'll do it while eating a ton of candy. Wouldn't you like that? Ooh, the class cheered. Mr. Woolley smiled, but he was up to no good. So I really like the fact that um, when the kids cheer, ooh, it's um, written in a different font and it's bolded. I think that's really cool. It adds some interest for the children reading this book, uh, which also disproves this reviewer's argument of this book is solely made for the parents to virtue signal to the children and not actually made for kids. That disproves, that, this right there, the interesting font on the text, disproves that argument. Because the very fact that their choice to do that is clearly made for the children reading this book. Not the parents, because the parents wouldn't care about that. So I mean, what more do you want me to say? Also, another thing that she commented on this page is that she tried to make the argument that on the back of the book, um, they, the synopsis said that uh, the students weren't learning anything, and in this page, uh, the teacher, Mr. Worley, said that they were still going to learn stuff, but that's actually not the case. Um, uh, because on the back of the book, it says... But when her new teacher focused more on candy than teaching, it does not say that he didn't focus on teaching at all. It says that he focused more on candy than teaching. So, that's incorrect um, of the reviewer to assume. Um, and in, then inside, it says, we'll learn all of our sheepy things like counting and reading, but we'll do it while eating a ton of candy. And that matches up with what it says on the back of the book. So there is no inconsistency. Also, another thing. Yes, this review is that extremely detailed that we have to go over all these little points because that's how detailed the original review is. So this is going to be a long video. I apologize. But the original video was 50 minutes. Do you see how short this book is? Yeah, it's really crazy. This is not a hate video. <laughs> 
this is not a hate video. It's just it's a little bit of a rant video. I apologize. It's gonna get ranty up in here. So, so this reviewer complained about the line, uh, "Mr. Woolley smiled, but he was up to no good," um, because the reviewer said, "Oh well, you shouldn't." state the obvious in, uh, in that line. You should um, you shouldn't spell it out that he's uh, up to no good. You should imply that through like descriptions and stuff like that. And I'm like, ma'am, it's a book for kids. Let's look on the back of the book. Oh, yep. It says right here. It says right here in little print above the barcode, children ages three and up. For children ages three and up, they spell it out directly because th that's the it's for kids like I thought that was obvious they need to get the point of what the book is in a short amount of time because they're kids it's to be told in a way that three-year-olds can understand it's not supposed to be super descriptive again it's for kids Rose raised her hand. Excuse me, Mr. Woolley, sir. I would love to have a sweet, but my parents told me I shouldn't eat too much candy at once. No, 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 Mr. Woolley interrupted. Don't worry. It'll be fine. You should eat as much candy as you want. Your parents will never know my class is a safe space. Mr. Woolley laughed evilly to himself. Uh, okay, so a couple things. The reviewer said in her video that she was really confused about uh, the main character Rose's motivation for things. Um, but... It spells it out right here what her character motivation is. She says, Excuse me, Mr. Woolley, sir. I would love to have a sweet, but my parents told me I shouldn't eat too much candy at once. So, her character motivation is that she wants to listen to her parents. That's what her character motivation is. It's spelled out right there. So I'm not sure how you as the reviewer were confused when it's your job to review books. This reviewer is an author of children's literature, and she can't even understand basic sentences written in a children's book. I don't know. I don't know, man. Another thing is, um, she goes on and on in her review about how Mr. Woolley never told the kids to hide things from their parents, or to disobey their parents, but literally he says right here in the second paragraph. No, 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 Mr. Willie interrupted. Don't worry, it'll be fine. You should eat as much candy as you want. Your parents will never know. My class is a safe space. So he literally tells her to disobey her parents right there. So did you just miss that or, or what? <laughs> and then also she says that um, where you're setting up the character who says the term safe space is the evil character, which I can understand that argument because um, uh, us in the LGBTQ community often do use the term safe space, um, referring to a LGBTQ friendly space. Um, and I do understand why that could be upsetting, but the thing about that is we as a community do not own words and terms, okay? We do not own certain phrases. Just because we use them does not mean we own them. Like, here, I'll use an example of something else. The rainbow is our symbol, right? But it is can also be the symbol of the autistic community, which I am a part of. It can also be the symbol of the Christian community, which I am also a part of. So, like, we do not own specific things, just because we use them to represent us. Then the reviewer in question says that the author should not say Mr. Woolley laughed evilly to himself. Same thing as on the last page. Uh, she says that the author shouldn't spell out explicitly that the um, character Mr. Woolley is evil. I'm going to say the exact same thing. It's for three-year-olds. They need to understand that the character of Mr. Woolley is evil. It's a book for three olds. Calm down. Now we are finally moving on to the next page. <laughs> this is not my choice to move so slowly through this video. I'm just reacting to what the other reviewer was, I swear. A lot of 
hiding something from her parents made Rose feel funny. Her parents always taught her not to keep secrets from them. But before she could think about it more, Mr. Woolley handed her a delicious lollipop. Rose decided that if her teacher says okay, then surely she could eat one little piece, and so she did. I want to point out to you how he's not giving her time to think about making her own decisions here. He's just giving her the candy. Um, and he's not allowing her time to think about whether she's going to listen to her parents or if she's not going to listen to her parents, he's just giving her the candy. So I want to point that out to you. Um, because really what the story is about is like a warning against child predators and, and pedophilia. That's what this book is about. Um, as I mentioned in my intro, so I just want to point out to you that there are a bunch of early red flags in this book, and that that's one of them. After school, Rose's mother asked how her first day had gone. Rose thought about the sweets and looked down. Fine, she answered, remembering Mr. Woolley had promised that her parents would never know. So, on this page, I want to point out something really cool about the art, and I think the artist did a really good job. They're eating, uh, vegetables and fruit, versus when she's at school, they're eating candy. Um, which proves, like, kind of metaphorically shows that her house is a healthy environment and her school with Mr. Woolley, her class, is an unhealthy environment. Uh, so I like the metaphor there and you can explain that to your kids as you read this book to them. I think that was a really subtle detail that I really appreciate. Another red flag if you will. The next day, when the lambs were at recess, Mr. Rooley brought out a cart filled with cakes and candy. Cakes, candy, ate as much as you want. You can trust me, I won't tell your parents. It'll be our little secret. Rose stayed on his swing. She already had some sweet treats that morning, and Rose thought she might get a tummy ache if she ate any more. Okay, a couple of things I want to point out on this page. So, first of all, he says, You can trust me, I won't tell your parents. It'll be our little secret. Red fucking flag. That is really, really creepy. If an adult ever says that to a kid, it is really creepy. Um, that is a really great sign that a person is a pedophile. Just saying. <laughs> um, and in the review, the, the reviewer was like, Oh, the, Mr. Woolley is not doing anything wrong. When clearly, if someone says, It'll be our little secret to a kid, that's very disturbing and not okay so I don't know why this person was like defending this it's kind of concerning to me I'm not trying to say that this person was doing anything wrong but it's just like concerning how throughout the entire review this person was like defending the villain of the story it's just like kind of concerning also this tells a really good message because it says she'd already ha had some sweet treats that morning and Rose thought she might get a tummy ache if she ate any more so this is telling kids who are already obsessed with sugar that if they ate too much sugar, then they are going to have a tummy ache. So I think this is a good message, right? Like, I don't see any bad messaging with this at all. And a big part of this person's review is she was like, oh, um, Mr. Woolley is a metaphor for a tradesperson. And I'm like, tell me where, where does it say that, he, that Mr. Woolley is a tradesperson? It doesn't. Thanks for playing. All right, now let's move on to the next page. At the end of the day, Mr. Rolly pulled Rose aside. I noticed you didn't eat any cake today, so I saved you a cupcake. Here. Thank you, Mr. Rolly, Rose whispered. But I don't think my parents would want me to have so much cake. Maybe I could take the cupcake home and ask them? Oh, how, Mr. Rolly? You're old enough to make your own decisions, so don't worry about your parents. Okay. So, right here we get another huge red flag. Also, another bolding and change of font for the text, which is really cool. Uh, again, this book is clearly written with children in mind because they do fun little things like that. So, argument dismantled. Huge red flag, like I was saying. She says she wants to um, take the cupcake home and ask her parents if it's okay that she can have it and his response is to freak out and say no don't do that you're old enough to make your own decisions so don't worry about your parents like that is another huge red flag that he clearly um is 
a person with bad intentions towards children. So, like, I don't think we should be giving this teacher a pass on that just because he's a teacher. Like, there are bad teachers in this world, and I think we have to um, remember that. Rose tries to do the right thing in here, and he's really taking advantage of her. I don't want to breeze past that. Mr. Worley knelt down beside Rose. You can trust me, Rose. I'm here to support you, and I won't tell your parents anything. This can be our little secret. Rose took the cupcake, and Mr. Worley gave her a wicked smile. He knew his plan was working perfectly. Okay, so, again, he says, this can be our little secret. So that's twice that he's said to children that phrase, this can be our little secret. Again, red fucking flag. That's really, really disturbing and concerning if an adult ever says that to a kid. I mean, we're all adults here watching this video. My channel isn't for kids, so I'm assuming that, like, we're all adults here that know that that's a red flag. Um, yeah, that's just really concerning. And the fact that this reviewer that teaches children... Be by the way, uh, she this reviewer is a teacher that ch teaches children. It's kind of concerning, to be honest, but I'm not here to make up conspiracy theories because I'm not like this reviewer. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure this reviewer is a lovely person in real life, but they're, they're reviewing skills, man. <laughs> so, also... The reviewer complains about the line. He knew that his plan was working perfectly. That's like, what, the third time this reviewer has said, don't spell out explicitly what the character is feeling, and this is the third time my response is, is the book for three it up? How many times are we going to have the same conversation? My goodness. At the end of the first month of school, Mr. Worley made an announcement. Tomorrow, our class is taking a field trip to Caddy Cavern. It will be fantastic. There are more good things to eat in this cavern than you could have a dream of. Okay, so they're going to Candy Cavern. I want to point out another cool thing with the art here is that all of the kids except for Rose in, on this page are starting to get really fat because he's been fattening them up with candy. But Rose herself is still skinny because she is suspicious of Mr. Woolley and hasn't been eating as many sweets as we can see from previous pages. So I really like that. The artists, shout out to them, man. They did such a good job on this book. Like... I hope they're getting paid really well because they did an amazing job. That night, Rose's father asked her how her day had been. Um, Rose paused. It was fine, I guess. I just have a tummy ache. Oh no, said her mother. What did you eat today? Well, I can't tell you. My teacher said it was a secret. This is, this is really bad, obviously. Like, am I the only one who thinks this is really bad? I can't be the only person who thinks that this is really bad. And... I don't know, it's just really concerning that this reviewer didn't see any problem with this. Also, another thing I want to highlight, not super relevant to this page, but just the book in general, is that the reviewer constantly goes on about how the writing in this book is terrible. I have not seen a single error in the writing in this book. And if you guys know that if there's a problem with the writing, I'll point it out. Because in my review of Ponyella, a book I really love, that's over my channel, go watch it. <laughs> um... I pointed out that there was an error in the writing on the first page. Um, and I still love that book, but there was a mistake in the writing, and I pointed it out and talked about it. Because I'm an honest reviewer. But I haven't seen an error in the writing in this book, so... I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Oh, Rose, that's not good, said her father. It's important you let us know right away if anyone tells you to keep a secret from us. So Rose showed her parents everything about the candy and Mr. Woolley. Rose's father put his arm around her and encouraged her, letting her know that she had done the right thing by coming to them. Rose felt very thankful that she was honest and that her parents helped her with this tricky situation. So notice how her parents were supportive of her. They didn't get mad at her for eating the candy. They just wanted to help her be safe. Um, and this is a healthy family dynamic right here. And it's also a really good message. The reviewer says in her video, oh, some parents aren't trustworthy, some parents are abusive. Yes, that's true, but in this story, clearly, Rose doesn't have abusive parents. She has very good parents, and the parents that do have, the kids that do have good parents should be encouraged to communicate with their parents and talk to them. Like, I don't see why we can't have a book about that. 
That's just a good message. The next day, Rose arrived at the candy cavern, but it was dark and damp and not at all as fantastic as Mr. Woolley had said. And where was everybody? Hello, she called. That's when something big and bad came up behind her. So she's arrived at the candy cavern, and it's really creepy. It kind of looks like a glow golf course to me, mixed with a haunted house. Oh, that's funny. Mr. Woolley snatched Rose up as his woolly disguise fell to the ground. I've got you at last, Mr. Woolley the wolf, chuckled as he tossed her into the cage with the rest of her classmates. Rose and the rest of the land shook with fear. Okay, so... He's revealed to be a wolf. Don't know how that's a metaphor for trans people. If you're trans, comment down below if you think uh, the, a wolf pretending to be a sheep is a metaphor for trans people because I don't see how that is a metaphor for that. <laughs> uh, because here's the thing. This is supposed to be a little Red Riding Hood retelling and I'm pretty sure it was never supposed to be a metaphor that the wolf from Little Red Riding Hood was trans. Like, that's never what the story was about. Like, that's just not what the story was about. Have, if you do a viewer, have you ever read Little Red Riding Hood? Was that not a part of your childhood? You had a sad childhood if Red Riding Hood wasn't a staple. Okay, so this is the page where we really get a lot of metaphorical proof that this book is about pedophilia. Or warning against pedophilia, I mean. Another wolf emerged, and they both licked their long, sharp teeth. Mr. Woolley said, Now that I fattened all you little lambs up, we're ready for a delicious lunch, and because you never told your parents about the candy, there's nothing that can stop us. Okay, so that just proves that this book is about, like, a metaphor for that because, um, basically what this is trying to say is that, um, if you look at the steps of, uh, grooming, especially child grooming, step one is called the love bomb, and that means you shower the kid with, like, presents and gifts and sometimes candy, and... If they're in a bad situation, you protect them, you defend them, you, like, make you make yourself a safe person, pretty much. And then you take them away to a location where no one will see you do bad stuff to them, and then you rape them. And in this case, it's even worse, because he brought his friend over to, like, rape them together. So that's even worse. And it's metaphorically talking about the love bombing through the candy when it says, now that I found you little lambs up, and it's metaphorically referring to him raping the children when it says, we're ready for a delicious lunch. And then, and because you never told your parents about the candy, there's nothing that can stop us. So that's what this book is about. It's not about transphobia. It's about pedophilia. Also, I like how the other wolf looks like a pirate. Um, another proof that this book is written, in fact, for children is because it says, ah, ha, 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 right here. And that's very, like, going to be intriguing to look at for a kid. Um, so, again, I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over again. But the review says the same things over and over again. So I kind of have to. Um, so bear with me, guys. All of a sudden, Rose noticed Shadow approaching. Stay away from my Rose! With a whack, Rose's father sent the wolves straight into their own cages and slammed the door shut. So, because Rose did tell her parents about the grooming, or candy, as it says in this book, um, her parents were able to save everyone. Now, for some reason, the reviewer skipped this page, and I don't know why, but anyway, here it is. Rose's parents freed the little lambs and brought them back safe and sound to their own mothers and fathers. So that's nice. And it shows the cops arresting the wolves. And here is the last page of the book. From then on, Rose never kept secrets from her parents. Never again did a teacher or candy come between them. And they lived happily ever after. The end. So, a couple of things I want to point out about this page that really wraps up this review really well. On my debunking of the other review. And if the original reviewer got to this page, she was like, what is the moral of the story? I have no idea. And I'm like, first of all, how do you not have no idea? Because did you read the book, how do you have no idea? But also, it literally says, from then on, Rose never kept secrets from her parents. Never again did a t-shirt or candy come between them. 
it literally spells out what the moral is right there in those two sentences. Um, <laughs> the moral of the story is to not keep secrets from your parents and be wary of pedophiles. Like, that's literally what the moral of the story is. So how did you not understand? You were a full grown adult. Anyway. And also, one more thing I want to point out is they are literally eating sweets in this page. They are eating cake. And you cannot say that the story, more of the story is to never eat sweets at all. Because they are literally eating cake on this page. All the story was saying is that there can be too much of a good thing. And eating too much cake in excess is bad for your stomach. Because also, in the background, there is a bowl of fruits and vegetables. It's just saying you should have both. So, you're incorrect there, reviewer. And that is the end of the book! Now let me tell you why this book's magazine is important. When I was in middle school, I had the principal of the school threaten me and then demand that I never tell my parents. So... It is a thing that happens, and we need to be aware of it. And we need to tell kids what to do in that situation, and that's what this book does. So I think it's, it's a really important story, and it is a book that kids should have access to, and I'm glad that it is a book that kids have access to. So that's pretty much all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this book review, and I hope you learned something about what actually happens in the book. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.